History in a Nutshell Despite what you might think, medicine in the Middle Ages wasn't all silly superstition, pointless potions, and fantastical folklore. It's true that medieval medics didn't have things like vaccines or antibiotics, and it wasn't clear to them what caused many kinds of disease. But even so, they drew on ancient wisdom, hands-on experience, and good old common sense to try to keep people healthy and alive. Most leading medical minds of the time relied on the teachings of three long-dead ancient Greeks, Aristotle, Hippocrates, and Galen. Between them, these guys had some cracking ideas, as well as some that were a little more… crackpot. In terms of medieval medicine, their most influential theory was all about the importance of the four humors. These humors were bodily fluids – blood, phlegm, yellow bile, and black bile. Yum. Most people agreed that keeping your humors in balance was the key to good health. And the key to knowing your humors was to study your pee. And they really studied it. They'd look at its color and mm. consistency, and give it a good long sniff to work out what was what. Even today, we still use urine to diagnose people, but we don't usually recommend bloodletting, which was the most common treatment of the Middle Ages. To rebalance your humors, medieval doctors would pop leeches onto your skin and let them suck your blood. But they also recognized the benefits of general healthy living, and books of the time were full of advice about sleep, exercise, and diet that is just as relevant to us today. Medics were into their herbs as well as their humors. Many ordinary people had a good knowledge of natural remedies, and specialist apothecaries had their own shops in towns and cities. Monasteries had gardens where they grew plants like sage, mandrake, catnip, and chamomile. And some of the healing mixtures they used are still around today, like licorice for coughs, ginger for bad stomachs, and even snail slime for burns. Medieval people were also deeply religious, and many believed that if you prayed to the right saints, they'd intervene on your behalf with God. One practice was to visit a saint's shrine and leave behind a bent silver penny, or to burn a candle of the same length as your affected body part. Even weirder were birth girdles, parchments with images of saints on them which were wrapped around women as they gave birth. So you had the four humors, plenty of herbs, and a good dose of religion. But major injuries clearly needed something a bit more substantial. And that's where surgeons came in, often in the form of the barber surgeon. That's right, barber. Back then, the same chap who'd cut your hair could also take out your teeth, stitch up your skull, or lop off your leg. They weren't licensed doctors, but they could be pretty well trained. Skilled barber surgeons might even try something called trepanning to treat seizures and mental illnesses. They'd cut a hole in your head, expose the outer bits of your brain, and, well, hope for the best. And remember, this was all without anesthetic or sterilized equipment. Medieval medicine had plenty of other issues. Governments barely intervened in public health, life expectancy was low, and doctors were helpless when faced with major epidemics and plagues like the Black Death. But for all its strangeness, medieval medicine wasn't as mad as it's often made out to be. It was based on some sophisticated principles, it could often be highly creative, and sometimes it could even make a good deal of difference to people's lives.